Moises May. Hello. Hello, Mr. Jasmine. Yes, Abi. Hello. Welcome. Thank you, Abi. Where are the people now? Mr. Ismail. Hello, Mr. Ismail. Sen niye bağlanamıyorsun? Bugdan izliyorum. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Not actually, you can't get a great thing as a class at the party in the academy. I'm not saying that you can't get a great thing. I'm not saying that you can't get a great thing. So, I hold the two degrees there, I'm not going to let them. So, and because of their working, that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that you can't get a great thing. ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、
Uh, good afternoon once again uh, for those that are uh, just joining us. Uh, we're searching, we're just waiting for like a few more people to join so that we don't uh, have issue with accepting people and the rest. Uh, if you did not sign in using the Google, uh, Google form, please kindly write your full name as you want it to appear on the certificate using the chat. Thank you.
What are we doing? Time management. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Talk about the student affairs department, which uh, Ms. Fawcett is in. Uh, this seminar series, as we all know, this is all lockdown. Everyone at home, so at least we need to like engage ourselves in one way or the other. So, this is a series of organized by the alumni relations department in collaboration with uh, the student affairs uh, department. Today's topic is time management. But before the speaker continue, part of our activities uh, currently are we have the Arabic classes, we have Turkish classes, and we have our cooking classes. And after today's uh <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Professor Dr. Usman is here. So yes. before I hand over the mic to him, I'm going to uh, introduce him. Prof. Dr. Usman Kerolu was born in 1978. In 1995, he began his education in Marmara University, Faculty of Communication Department of Journalism. In 1999, he graduated from Information Specialist Program of the same department. He received his MA uh, in 2002 and PhD in 2002. A degree from Marmara University, Informa Informatics a Program, title of his PhD thesis, a permission-based individual marketing in mobile content publishing and broadcasting. Between April, on October 23, he completed his military service in uh, NATO, Kosovo. Between 1998 and uh, 2019, he worked as a reporter, editor, web consultant, and ghost writer in ICT field. 
Since 2009, he was working as a full-time faculty of different universities in Turkey. Courses sought introduction to advertise, advertise, uh, advertising, public relations, communication, and media sociology. Social media and communication, networks, new media and publishing slash broadcasting, presentation techniques, political communication. April 2014, he earned associate professorship degree on applied communication. His research and education interests include relation, effect, and interaction of new and emerging communication technologies and media, new media slash digital media with the individual and society. Media and communication studies, he is working as the acting HOD of the Department of Mass Communication here at Nile University of Nigeria. Uh, Prof. Dr. Usman, uh, you are welcome. Uh, you Thank, have you. The Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, can I start sharing yes. screen? Yes. Okay, the, uh, if you stop the screen share function on your end, I can, okay, thank you. <clears throat> thank you again for this opportunity to meet with you and thank you for your attendance. Uh, now we have enough time at last after uh, many, many times we had this conversation with our colleagues, with our students and among your friends I don't have enough time. I'm unable to do things that I want to do because I have limited time daily. Now we cannot say such a thing. Now we have enough time in our hands. Um. Uh, the thing, the thing for us to think about uh, when we look at the time management literature, we are going to see some things uh, repeated over and over. And if we summarize all of these, um, we are going to see uh, the things that I'm sharing currently with you. Uh, at the end of this presentation, towards the end of uh, this uh, presentation, I'm going to share some of the books uh, the names of the books and I'm going to talk about them a little bit, uh, share some more important lessons uh, coming from those books. But throughout this um, presentation, I'm just going to touch specific issues and uh, at the end, maybe we can talk about uh, these with a question and answer session. Okay. The, Literature always talks about a person's purpose in life as a beginning point. If you, as an individual, don't know your purpose in life, uh, your calling in your life, it isn't going to be uh, an easy task for you to uh, find out your objectives, goals, and tasks. And if you find and define these, uh, things, then it is going to be easy for you to uh, manage your time. Basically, if you found already your purpose in life, uh, that's going to shape your life, uh, it then needs you uh, to create, it needs you to create the purpose, needs you to create some objectives to reach. Okay? And when you look at the objectives level, you are going to see the strategy. Uh, it is generally yearly strategy, and it is, of course, about prioritization because you're going to have multiple objectives uh, to reach your purpose or purposes. And then comes the goals or tactics. We are talking about tactics in terms of weekly, monthly activities. And to uh, manage these, you need to
Il y a personne pour parler ou pas Ok, who Ok. Are you able to hear me Yes, yes sir. Ok. Ok. I'm just going to... Uh, talk about this a little bit. I'm not sure when did you uh, start un, uh, unable to hear me. Uh, if you look at the literature, you see these. And if you have these, beginning from the purpose in your life and uh, continuing with objectives and goals and tasks, if you have these written down, then it's going to be easy for you to continue uh, towards your goal of managing your time according, accordingly. So you need to glue these to your wall or make a background picture on your laptop because you need to remember, you need to keep in your mind all of these things, purpose in your life, objectives, tactics, and tasks, okay? So how can you, I'm not sure if you've already did uh, such things, if you've um, attempted to find out who you are, what's your purpose in life, etc. But uh, if you didn't, if you didn't, you need to do these uh, at the beginning. So these are some personal questions. Using these questions and the answers, uh, you are going to define your purpose in life, okay? What were you like as a kid? What are you like now as an adult? What are your hobbies, passions, and or interests? These are defining things of who we are. And you can look at your current situation. What do you do for living what led you to decide to start your own business if you are uh, a businessman or take the job you currently hold do you see anything from your past and or anything from your interests and hobbies that ties in with what you do now what hobbies passions or interests do you wish you had more time for Again, it is not just about what's going on. Uh, it's also about what you want uh, to happen. So, uh, if you clear your annotation, I can easily continue. If you don't, I am going to stop and wait. Who did so? And uh, the person who did this needs to clear, I guess. Let me just attempt. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So Hello. what are your accomplishments so far? Hello, Paul. Were the accomplishments you listed Hello. personal or 
business or a combination? And what's on your bucket list? Meaning the things that you want to do before you die. Uh, let me ask you, how much time do you have, do you think, before you die? Is it 50 years, 70 years, 80 years? Depending on your current age, it changes, I know. Depending on the situation in the um, specific town you are living or you are going to live, or the city or the country, it changes, I know. And the infrastructure of health and pandemics, epidemics, these are all important things to consider. But in general, we have limited time on this earth. How do you want to spend your time? What do you want to achieve? What's on your bucket list before you die? What do you want to do? These are things that you need to consider. Based on your definition. Do you have a great life? If your answer is yes, then kick up your heels and give yourself a high five. If your answer is not yet, how close are you to it? According to these, plan for a day, a week, a month, a year, five years, and 10 years of your life. Is it possible for you to do that? Did you ever consider doing this kind of a thing? I know that we all have to-do lists from time to time, at least something like this. I'm going to pass this course. Or I'm going to graduate from this department, etc. Or I'm going to invest in this specific field. I'm going to uh, found, I'm going to find my passion and create a business out of that kind of a thing. But do you, did you ever meet someone who plans his or her five years, next five years or next 10 years? I have met such people and they were all successful people. They are still successful. They are earning more, they are living um, meaningful lives and uh, they are happy all about their lives because they are sticking or at least they are trying to stick the general plan that they have so after these we need to prioritize from time to time plans may change or plans need to be flexible. We need to prioritize from time to time. But most of the time, when you look at the literature regarding time management, you see this. You need to keep your focus on three important tasks daily. That's it. If you accomplish those three important tasks in a day, then you are set. It is okay for you to continue you need to feel uh, that accomplishment and you need to know that you are going towards your objectives or eventually you are going to reach your purpose in life. So what is the uh, fifth thing that we need to focus? According to the literature again, we see that we need to perfect our habits. What kind of habits are we talking about? The kind that lets us reach our purpose in our lives. So, time management is the process of planning and controlling how much time to spend on specific activities. Good time management enables an individual to complete more in a shorter period, lowers stress and leads to career success. The ability to manage your time effectively is important. And good time management leads to improved efficiency and productivity, less stress and more success in life. I'm going to mention some things regarding uh, our current situation. 
uh, quarantine days uh, when we are spending our times mostly in our homes. Uh, but these are general things that we need to discuss or at least talk about. The benefits. Let's look at the benefits of managing time effectively. If we look at the first thing that we are going to have, the stress relief, it is stress relief. Making and following a task schedule reduces our anxiety, overall anxiety. And as we check off items on our to-do list, you can see, we can see that we are making tangible progress. This helps us avoid feeling stressed out with worry about whether we are getting things done. More time. Good time management gives us extra time to spend in our daily life. People who can time manage effectively enjoy having more time to spend on hobbies or other personal pursuits. And we have, we are going to have more opportunities and less time wasted on trivial activities. Good time management skills are key qualities that employers look for. The ability to prioritize and schedule work is extremely desirable for any organization. Okay, we need to uh, have this ability to realize our goals. And if we practice good time management, then it is possible for us to be able to better achieve goals and objectives and do so in a shorter length of time. Some tips, let's look at some tips regarding effective time management. These are the top tips for managing time effectively. We set our goals, we prioritize, we set a time limit for each task and take breaks between tasks, organize ourselves and our environment, of course, and the people we interact, we are going to mention uh, these things, remove non-essential tasks by delegating if it is possible or by not doing them. Uh, this is an important thing that everyone needs to focus. Removing non-essential tasks are going to be the, I don't know, maybe the best in, or the most important thing in your skill set. And the seventh, planning ahead. Okay, how we can set goals correctly? The most important thing about this issue is they need to be achievable and measurable. Using the SMART method when setting goals may help. In a sense, we need to make sure that the goals we set are specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely. I want to read isn't a goal. I want to read more, again, isn't a goal. I want to read 10 pages from this book every day. Is a specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely goal. And if we add, I want to read 10 pages from this book every night before eight, that's the best version of a goal. So, prioritization. We can look at the importance and urgency of tasks and determine which of them, the important and urgent ones. And if we eliminate the others according to their non-urgent situation or not important situation, then we can de either delegate these tasks or we can set aside them to do later. Setting a time, to, uh, a time limit to complete a task. This helps us 
be more focused and efficient. And we are going to mention the Pomodoro technique. It is a good way to manage our time and finish tasks every day uh, within uh, 25 to 30 minutes. Uh, spending 25 to 30 minutes to each, we can finish many tasks and helps setting a time limit to complete a task helps us recognize potential problems before they arise. That way we can make plans for dealing with them. For example, let's assume we need to write up five reviews in time for a meeting or uh, some things, some assignments for some courses. However, we realize that it I or you are going to be able to only to get four of them done in the time remaining before the meeting or the deadline. If you become aware of this fact well in advance, you may be able to easily delegate writing up one of the reviews to someone else. However, if you hadn't bothered to do a time check on your tasks beforehand, you might have ended up not realizing your time problem until just an hour before the meeting. What I'm talking about is if you know how much time you are spending for a similar task or for the same type of task, it is going to be easy for you or easier for you to plan ahead. At that point, it might be considerably more difficult to find someone to delegate one of the reviews to and more difficult for them to fit the task into their day too. Take a break between tasks. This is important and as I mentioned, Pomodoro Technique includes this break uh, issue. When doing a lot of tasks without a break, it is harder to stay focused and motivated. So we need to allow some downtime between tasks to clear our head and refresh ourselves. And there are some things that we can do during these break times. A brief nap, going for a short walk or meditating can be one of those. Let me just check the chat. Okay. So, how to organize ourselves? If we are using the calendar, be it a physical calendar or online, we need to use those things, those systems, for more long term time management instead of a daily to do list or scheduling some things. We need to do uh, calendaring for more long-term time management. And write down the deadlines for projects or for tasks, which days might be best to dedicate to specific tasks. Probably we are going to mention about this, but uh, for a week, you can arrange specific days or adjust specific days for specific kinds of activities or tasks. It is up to you. Uh, you can have a morning routine, evening routine, but in between morning and evening, you are going to have a lot of time to do a lot of different tasks. But if you specify days for specific tasks or task types, then it's going to be easier for you. So removing non-essential tasks or activities how to do that. We need to determine what is significant and what deserves our time. And this way we can free up more of our time to be spent on important things. Planning ahead. I'm not sure if you are doing that, but uh, it is a uh, best way, it is the best way maybe to do this uh, when you are about to sleep, just uh, write down the things that you need to do tomorrow. 
or uh, when you wake up, just when you wake up, uh, try to find a minute or two to write down things that you are going to do uh, that specific day. That helps you clear your mind about the issues and a clear idea of what you need to do that day. That actually helps you to focus yourself towards the tasks uh, or accomplishments that you are planning. And if you do this as a habit at the end of each day, uh, that's going to change your life entirely. And you know, the storm hit the ground running. That's an important thing for you to have. Let's look at implications of poor time management. I'm not sure if you are able to remember some of your friends or some of the people you so far met uh, while we are talking about the implications of poor time management. Poor workflow. The inability to plan ahead and stick to goals means poor efficiency. If you don't plan ahead, you could end up having to jump back and forth or backtrack in doing your work. That translates to reduced efficiency and lower productivity. Wasted time. Talking to friends on social media while doing an assignment. You are distracting yourself and wasting your time. Loss of control. By not knowing what the next task is, you suffer from loss of control of your life that can contribute to higher stress levels and anxiety. Poor quality of work. Poor time management typically makes the quality of your work suffer. Having to rush to complete tasks at the last minute usually compromises quality of your work. And eventually you are going to get a poor reputation. Uh, since some of you are students, you can think about the teacher's idea about yourselves and in general your situation in the university. If you are working, if clients or your employer cannot rely on you to complete tasks in a timely manner, their expectations and perceptions of you are adversely affected. If a client cannot rely on you to get something done in time, on time, they will likely take their business elsewhere. How to make the most of your time at home during quarantine? That's maybe an important question in your minds. According to the research, negative psychological effects of quarantine, including PTS symptom, post-traumatic stress symptom, confusion, and anger and stressors included longer quarantine duration, infection fears, frustration, boredom, inadequate supplies, inadequate information, financial loss, and stigma. Uh, the suggestions about these, don't just let this time in quarantine make you feel anything but happy. How to do that? Don't let this time pass you by. Don't just survive this time. You need to try to make the most of the time you have. Be intentional with every minute you get. Enjoy this time to finally do those someday projects you've been wanting to do, but never had the time for. Enjoy this time to just relax and spend much needed quality time with your partner or kids. Enjoy this time to really take care of yourself. Make the most of your time at home during this quarantine. By what? By doing what? Get ready for the day. Don't spend an entire day in your pajamas if it makes you feel lazy. If you are comfortable in them, then by all means, but if it contributes to you not getting the things you want to get done, then change. Take a shower to wake yourself up. Put on your clothes, favorite clothes, dress up, get ready, do your hair, do whatever you need to do in order to feel good about yourself and 
that will help make you feel ready to take on the day. Have a great morning routine. Uh, we mentioned habits, and these are important things to have. If you have a good morning and evening habit or habits, then it's going to be easier for you to accomplish your daily tasks. Have a great morning routine to help, e help you ease into your day. And you need to find time to exercise. Don't give up on your workout goals. Why are we mentioning all of these? Are these not something else uh, other than the time management? When you look at the literature, these are all related topics to the time management because of the productivity, general productivity uh, title. Under productivity, we have time management and all of these things that we are talking about. Thank so, you. Yeah. There are tons of way or ways to still get exercise. You can do some yoga, download a fitness app, find a workout routine online, and there are four minute workouts, four minutes workouts. And those are actually equal to one hour uh, spending uh, time in one hour in a gym okay so workout routine and watching fitness videos while trying to do or follow up the people who are uh, in the videos there are so many options for us to do some home workouts try to move your body for at least 30 minutes a day exercise releases endorphins which makes you happy Happiness helps make the most of your day. And generally after such a, a morning routine, you are going to be able to start eagerly to your daily tasks. Then the other thing, learn about how to stay motivated to exercise with these tips. But the first thing is to eat healthy. And for this, make time for family meals. This will ensure everyone's eating healthy. Meal planning and prepping also helps you save money and takes the decision making each night easier. Spend time cooking together. It's a great way to bond and the kids can even help out. Stick to your normal daily breakfast, lunch and dinner routines. We are going to enter uh, Ramadan for the uh, Muslims. This will cause a change in terms of their routines, at least for the breakfast and dinner, plus we are going to remove lunch. And we are going to adjust ourselves to this change. So it is going to be um, important for us to adjust according to this change also. But again, when you look at the literature about time management or any other productivity, uh, self-help uh, book, you're going to notice that self-disciplining is the most important thing in terms of productivity, in terms of time management. It is actually managing yourself, not just the time, but managing yourself. Stay away from junk food. It can be easy to snack when you're home all day, so just don't buy any junk food so they are not around the house. You need to break up your day. Try to schedule smaller time blocks in your day. If you find it hard to stay focused, smaller time blocks may help you get more done without feeling stressed. If you have kids, doing this will also help full, uh, so you can attend to what they need in between each time block. Working in smaller blocks of time can be really helpful in your new schedule. Taking breaks is actually good for your productivity, You'll be able to focus much better if you take regular breaks. Sleep at a reasonable time. I know how easy it can be to stay up all night and sleep in when you don't have nowhere to go, but try not to do that. You need to be able to get up at a reasonable time to get the most of your day. If you are working from home like me, you're going to probably will have to start at a certain time too. 
And if you have kids, they probably won't let you sleep in all day. If you sleep at a reasonable time, you'll be able to get up early. Getting up early will allow you time to ease into your day. Have a daily plan or goal. Each night, pick one or three things that would make you feel accomplished if you got them all done the next day. Plan and visualize your entire day on what you want it to look like. We will just spend it on pointless stuff if we don't structure our time. Doing this will help you feel more motivated, focused, and happier because it gives you a direction and a purpose. Don't try to stick to a scheduled routine during this current in time. Our schedules will not be the same as before, so don't be so hard on yourself if you don't stick to your scheduled routines every day. Instead, keep your routines, but be flexible with your schedule. If you happen to wake up at 9 a.m., again, not 11, not 12, not noon, not afternoon. Not, <laughs> if you happen to wake up at 9 a.m. instead of 6 a.m., just continue your regular morning routine then. Missed your 10 a.m. workout? Try to do it as soon as you remember. If you skip on a daily chore, just get to it the next day. Be flexible and give yourself some compassion. Relax a bit and don't be so hard on yourself. This is a strange time to be in. So enjoy your days at home, be flexible on your schedule and get back to your routines as soon as you can. Virtually connect with your friends and family online, FaceTime, Skype, WhatsApp or Zoom with your friends and family whenever you can. Keep your house clean. Now that everyone is home, you can probably get some help with cleaning projects you've been wanting to do. But you can start with cleaning out the fridge or deep cleaning behind all the appliances. This is the perfect time to start fresh. So don't spend your entire days binge watching Netflix, binge watching your favorite shows. Instead, set limits so you still get to enjoy it but you don't feel bad about it when you've wasted an entire day doing that. I'm not sure how many of you felt this. So there's another issue and since I am coming from media field or communication field, I can easily say that that's true. There's a lot of news right now. It can be hard to focus when all you hear, read and see are COVID-19 updates. So you need to limit media intake. Don't spend hours scrolling social media because you won't get through them all. There's a lot of things going on right now, but it's just going to stress you out and cause you anxiety. And uh, let me give you one specific term or keyword for you to search, media literacy. There are uh, simple guidelines for media literacy. And uh, I suggest just try to find out uh, media literacy, um, five steps or five questions. When you search media literacy, five questions you are going to face or you are going to find uh, related information and these tips and uh, things are going to be very helpful for you. So read one or two articles from a trusted source and go do something else to take your mind off of it. Even the who says it is better for your mental health to limit your media intake. If there were going to be news about finding a cure for the coronavirus, you'll be sure to know about it. For now, all we can do is wait and stay home to be safe. Be present, shift your mindset and think positive. We can't control what's going on or what's going to happen. We can only control what we are doing, how we are feeling and what is happening right now. Focus on yourself in this moment, right now. Things aren't great, but you are home and you are safe. Take each minute that you are home and be mindful and present about what is happening. When you are completely present, 
everything else around us doesn't become a problem for our minds anymore because we are not worrying about all the things, only what is present. Don't let the fear of the future ruin your present. Worry will only add to your anxiety. If you are present in everything that you do, you will feel much happier and will definitely make the most of your day. If you are working, set boundaries by setting your own hours to avoid burnout. If you don't set boundaries, you can easily start working into time that should be spent on yourself, with your family, or with your partner. And if those boundaries aren't set and work spills over into your personal life, then that can cause stress, anxiety, and lead to depression or guilt. If you're not working, use this time to update your resume, update your LinkedIn account, make a list of potential jobs you can apply for or look for online or remote jobs you can work for and online certificate opportunities, education opportunities, of course, we can mention. Keeping a journal. This is a rare time to live in right now and there are so many feelings to be felt. Write in a journal to keep your mind in check. Write everything you're feeling. Find time each day to write about what you are grateful for, what you are hoping for, or just write about what's going on in the world and in your life. Practice self-care. Unwind at the end of the day and make a routine where you focus on yourself. Do something that makes you feel good. Read a fiction novel. I'm not sure how many of you read a fiction novel during the last month. Watch some YouTube videos. Schedule time each night to practice self-care. And don't skimp or out on it. Unwind and reset. At the end of the day, take some time for your evening routine. Cleaning up after dinner while the kids bathe, putting the kids to bed, reading them a story, doing this each night ensures we go to bed on time and start the next day feeling prepared and ready. You can either let this time pass you by and wait until this whole quarantine is over, which can be months, or you can try to enjoy it and do what you can to still live your life. When it's all over, you'll feel a great sense of accomplishment and be grateful that you didn't waste all those weeks or months of your life. Today is a great gift that we've been given. So let's use it wisely. So this was the initial part of my presentation. And let me check the time. Uh, okay, we may have 15 minutes more. And I'm going to mention first uh, this Pomodoro technique. And let me just look at the chat. Okay. I can share you uh, with you uh, these things through uh, the organizers later. Okay. We mentioned, uh, okay, Pomodoro. So, how many of you knew Pomodoro technique? Is it possible for you to write on the group chat? Uh, let me just summarize the technique. Uh, it is based on a kitchen timer, okay? It is called Pomodoro because in Italian it is, uh, it looks like a tomato or shaped like a tomato. So a uh, kitchen timer used to measure 25 minute intervals, okay? The name of the technique comes from the first timer used. And it is basically about uh, time boxing. With this technique, once a series of activities has been assigned to a specific time interval, the delivery date for those activities should never change. If necessary, the unfinished activities can be reassigned to the next time interval. What are the goals of the Pomodoro technique? 
the aim of the Pomodoro technique is to provide a simple tool or process for improving productivity, your own and that of your team, if you have a team, if you are working in a business. It can do the following. Alleviate anxiety, enhance focus and concentration by cutting down on interruptions, increase awareness of one's decisions, boost motivation and keep it constant, bolster the determination to achieve one's goals, refine the estimation process in both qualitative and quantitative terms, improve one's work or study process, strengthen one's determination to keep applying oneself in complex situations. So we have basically five stages. And if I can share, let me, let me try to share. Pomodoro technique, five stages. Okay. So we have planning, tracking, recording, and processing steps and visualizing at the end of the day. At the start of the day, we need to plan. At the end of the day, we need to visualize. And these are actually the things that we mentioned, right? And we need to track throughout the day what we did, how we did in terms of the time spent or the Pomodoros. They are called Pomodoros, 25 minutes of time spent for each task. Okay. So, uh, a timetable sets a limit. So we need to create a timetable first and then uh, we are going to use Pomodoros, 25 minutes of time plus a five minute break. After every four Pomodoros, take a 15 or 30 minute break. And this way we are going to have eventually one hour of time spent for at least uh, four different tasks if uh, we are only dealing one task at a time, we are trying to finish the task, then uh, only for the specific task. The Pomodoro is indivisible. There are no half or quarter Pomodoros. If a Pomodoro begins, it has to ring. Um, and I'm going to share you one simple technique for you to use if you're not uh, going to be able to use the, um, let's say, specific um, software or specific applications using your own um, phone, you can just create this simple thing called uh, Google search timer function. I'm not sure if you are familiar with the thing. Google provides many, many things like this. If you search the details, you are going to be able to see. When you write down at the search field, search form, timer for 25 minutes, it automatically starts a timer for you to use. Uh, and it starts 25 minutes counting down. Okay. At the end of this time, it's going to uh, warn you with a sound and then you can stop uh, your task and give yourself a five minute of break. And you can do this by again, timer for uh, five minutes. If you write this, you're going to get another uh, timer started for you for five minutes. In this time, no, no. Uh. Okay. If a Pomodoro is interrupted definitively, it's void. You need to restart. If you complete an activity during a Pomodoro, review your work until the Pomodoro rings. We need to protect the Pomodoro time. And uh, if an interruption happened, if someone um, distracted you, if something happened, 
uh, you need to uh, limit those types of um, situations, negotiate quickly to reschedule the interruption, uh, and if something or task takes more than five to seven Pomodoros, then you need to break it down. Complex activities should be divided into several activities, several tasks. If it takes less than one Pomodoro, then you need to add up. Simple tasks can be combined. Results are achieved Pomodoro after Pomodoro, but if you have, uh, which you should certainly have, uh, the timetable. The timetable always overrides the Pomodoro. You need to stick to your main timetable. And the other book that I'd like to mention, it is uh, written in, the, in a way like a non-fiction, uh, sorry, uh, like a fiction novel. And uh, let me just summarize some things. The 5 a.m. club helps you get up at 5 a.m. every morning and then build a morning routine and make time for the self-improvement you need to find success. There are lessons. Uh, basically, our brain works better if we wake up around 5 a.m. and start our day. And we need to also focus not just the mindset of ourselves, but health set, heart set, and also soul set, which uh, are explained inside the book um, extensively. And the third lesson, uh, we may use 20-20-20 formula to set our day up for success. The first 20 minutes of that first hour should consist of exercise. The next 20 minute block should consist of reflection and meditation. Finally, we need to make time to learn, reading and learning uh, for 20 minutes. Let me share that. Okay, not from here, but from probably, yeah. Okay, so we have these 20 minutes of blocks each. Pocket one is about movement. The second pocket is about reflection. And the third pocket is about growth. And if you understand what we are doing, why we are doing, and the benefits of the things that we are doing during those 20 minutes of time, which is possibly, uh, probably uh, possible for everyone uh, to spend 20 minutes uh, for each task. Uh, you are going to get very, very beneficial time out of these practice. Okay, after that, we need to focus on evening and daily habits. Let me just share those with you. Evening habits. Okay. The press sleep ritual of efficient people, productive people. Let's look at the 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Yeah, that's, that's the alarm coming from the uh, Google timer, okay? And between 7 and 8 p.m., we see last meal of the day, all devices, technological devices turned off, isolation from overstimulation, which is generally coming from TV, from computer and mobile phones, smartphones, okay? And between 8 p.m. and 9 p.m., time for real conversations with loved ones, 
optional second period of meditation. Frequent reading, audiobooks, podcast time, and regular session for recreational pursuits, periodic Epsom salt board. But, but these, uh, the first four item is applicable for everyone between 9 and 10 p.m. Preparation for sleep in a cool, dark, plus technology-free bedroom. Organization of exercise gear, if we are using gear, uh, for the pocket number one we mentioned, and evening gratitude practice, if we have that sort of a thing. Uh, for Muslims, of course, we are talking about uh, daily prayers. Okay, what else? Can I mention about this? <clears throat> okay, let me just uh, mention one thing from the book again about habits, lifetime habits. We need to start if we are trying to create or have a lifetime habit, we need to start with the trigger, a ritual, a reward, and repeat these things to create the habit itself that we want. Uh, these things are based on the latest scientific studies on how habits are formed. Our starting point is to create some kind of a trigger to embed the early rising ritual into your mornings. This could be as simple as having an old school alarm clock next to your bed that goes off at 5 a.m. Once you've got the trigger of your alarm clock in place, the next step is to run the routine you want to encode. By getting out of bed, you build the early rising neural circuit in your brain through the power of neuroplasticity. This is another term, key term, that I want you to look at after the presentation and that uh, will help you understand how our brain works and how we can form new beneficial good habits. Neuroplasticity. And make sure you have a preset reward in place. The reward is what kickstarts and then grows your drive to get the new habit done. Okay. And uh, about new habits, there is something else, and I'm going to finish uh, my presentation with this. Probably we are going to yeah have a little question and answer session. I'm not sure. Let me share this. The habit installation protocol. <clears throat> Normally, uh, we need to destruct our bad habits uh, for a certain time. If we try to destruct our bad habits that we want to change, then we can move to the installation peri period of the new habit. And then at the end of this installation period, we are going to get the integration point or integration period. And eventually at the end of around 66th day, we are going to reach the automaticity point. Okay. This point, at this point, uh, it's going to be automatic for us to, for example, uh, wake up around uh, 5 a.m. Okay. That was the... Uh, end of my presentation. Uh, I hope this was helpful to you. Uh, do you have any questions that you want to ask? Uh, thank you so much, Prof, for this uh, wonderful presentation. And um, to all participants, uh, it's time to ask questions. You can type in your question using the chat. 
or you can like unmute yourself and like uh, say out the question. And um, please, is it possible to have the notes in our email? Okay, I'm going to share yes. the notes or the presentation uh, with you through the organizers. Okay. Okay, thank you, sir. Hello. Is this right going to be a weekly course or is this a one time course? Uh, the thing is, I'm informed, yeah, I'm informed that this is a one time thing, but okay. if uh, the interest continues, we can uh, uh, continue with specific types of uh, issues about time management, about productivity, etc. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Uh, well, for time management, uh, is a single seminar that we that we just had today. But for the alumni relations department, we have a series of uh, seminar coming up on the twenty fifth of this month. We'll be having another uh, seminar. So just stay tuned and look out for our posters. And before you leave, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to uh, do that, but. I would like to share one simple, okay, if I can, of course, one simple yeah, <clears throat> the name how to choose right, okay, I'm going to share through the chat screen, if I can, let me just try but I'm unable to save it. I'm unable to send it to you. <clears throat> uh, there are, let me just show you, that will be <clears throat> beneficial. You may look at the literature and find yourself in a bit of a problematic <clears throat> situation. Uh, you can look at these types of things and you can try to find something beneficial for yourself, okay? Uh, for example, there are pickle jar theory, time blocking method, RPM method, Parkinson's law, Pomodoro technique, Pareto analysis, GTD, getting things done method, eat that frog method, Eisenhower matrix. These are all helpful uh, things for you to check and try to understand. Okay. Okay, uh, it's like we've come to the end of today's uh, seminar. Uh, Prof. Usman, thank you so much for this uh, wonderful uh, presentation. Welcome. So uh, to all our participants, uh, thank you for joining and stay tuned. Our uh, next seminar will be on the 25th of this month, hopefully. So once again, you're all welcome and nice meeting you all. Have a blessed day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. We will be expecting the slides to our email. Sure. Once we get the slide from Prof, we'll work on the slide and the video also so that we like uh, send it to everyone that registered. And you're okay, welcome. Also. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. You are most welcome. I hope you can. <laughs> Thank you very much for your wonderful presentation.